In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to verify your password policy and show users that um, they are meeting every single requirement as they meet them. A lot of the built-in password verification features that Bubble has will only show you that the password is valid once it's met the entire policy. Um, so for example, um, if I do uh, a sample password here, I'm displaying it up here so that you guys can see what I'm typing in. Um, I have two uh, criteria for my password policy being met, but there's two requirements still not being met. So this is using a method that I'm going to teach you today, um, but to start, what this is working with, what this involves, is the password policy that you set um, with Bubble. So if you go to your app's settings and then to the general tab up at the top here, and then over to privacy and security, and then define a password policy. If you don't have this enabled, if this is unchecked, then you won't see all of those extra settings there. Once you enable password policy, then you can define what that policy um, is and what the requirements should be. So you can set a minimum number of characters. Uh, you can require a number, a capital letter, a, a special character. You don't have to have these all checked. It's completely up to you what you want to be a part of the policy. So I'm going to have all of these checked and a minimum character requirement of six characters. Okay, so on my um, page here where we have our input field for the user to enter their password, I am displaying the uh, requirements in separate text elements so that they know exactly what has to go into the password. This just makes it very easy for them to create a password, not have to run into any errors, um, and make their sign-up process as smooth as possible. So by default, I have the color of the text in red. And what I want to do is, as each requirement is met, I'm going to change the color to green so that it looks something like this. Okay, again, Bubble's built-in password validations won't actually validate the password until the entire um, uh, set of requirements is met. So right now, Bubble uh, uh, is going to tell us that the input is invalid, but we won't necessarily know which part of the policy is being met, uh, or which part is invalid, which part is valid. Uh, so that's what we're learning here, is how to break this up so that you can communicate with your users a lot more clearly what is still missing. So, uh, and in my example here, I have this text element just to display the password we're typing in uh, to make it easier for us to see as we're testing this. So for the number of characters, this is a pretty straightforward one because Bubble lets you count the number of characters um, in an inputs value. So we'll go to the conditional tab for this text here. And you can I'm going to remove this expression so you can see me build it. So it will be the input passwords value and then the number of characters. Okay, so this will count the number of characters uh, of whatever you've typed in here. This value right now of this expression is going to be a number. If I type in the word test, then this value will be four. Um, now, I want to the condition to kick in if there are at least six characters, because that's what I set in my um, policy over here. So when, we'll go back to the condition, when the inputs values, uh, the input values number of characters is greater than or equal to six, then we'll change the color. That one's a pretty straightforward one. We're just counting the number of characters, it will change the color there. So we'll refresh the page here so you can see if I do, you know, four characters, then this will not turn green yet. If I do a couple more, then now we are at least six characters and the condition has kicked in. If I go to my debugger and hit the inspect tool on the bottom right here and highlight uh, or select this text, we can see that that condition is being met. And so that's why the color is changing. And you can design this however you want. And the point of um, 
uh, the, the lesson here is these conditions are what will do the checks for you. So you can change the font color, you can show an icon if you want to show little check marks, that's totally possible too. So if I select the condition here in my debugger, I can see if I select number of characters that the actual number of characters is 8 for what I've typed in here. Um, which is indeed greater than six, so that condition will pass. Now, for all of these other ones, for recognizing a capital letter, a number, or a special character, we're going to use um, regular expression to find the, a capital letter, any capital letter in this value here, to find a number and to find a special character. Regular expression lets you find patterns in some string. So if I type anything in here, I can uh, use a regular expression to find a capital letter, to find a number, or to find a special character. And there are different patterns that can look for different things. So for example, I'm actually going to copy this and put this on the right so that you can see me build this from the beginning. I'm going to clear that out but I've got them all in here now, so we'll see what they are. So for the capital letter, we'll start with the password field again. When this value um, uh, has, matches the pattern to find at least one capital letter, then we want the color to change. So in order to um, tell Bubble to look for a capital letter, we're going to extract with regex here. This stands for regular expression. So you'll select that, and here's where we enter in the pattern. And the pattern is to match any capital letters, at least one. And I have my pattern in this one over here, so I'm going to copy this. Regular expression is very, very powerful. Um, there are a lot of resources online that will um, teach you how to um, build these expressions. It's really kind of an endless combination of things depending on what you're doing. So um, I'm sharing with you the ones that uh, will help you find these very specific things. One capital letter, one number, one special character. So I'm going to go back to my extract window here and I'm going to paste in this uh, pattern. So uh, for to find a capital letter, uh, this is the range of the alphabet that we want to look. We want the full alphabet, and you can see those are in, cap in caps uh, so that it only matches capital letters. Okay, uh, now the result of this expression so far is a list of matches. So Bubble's going to say, okay, I'm looking at your input here, and I'm going to look with this modifier for regular expression. I'm going to look for any capital letters, and the result will be any found capital letters. So what we want to do is count those found matches. And as long as there is one, we want the condition to pass. So when count is greater than zero, it can be more than one, we just need at least one. You can also do greater than or equal to one, of course, it's the same. Then this will match, uh, or this condition will pass. Okay, so when the password's value um, returns matches for this regular expression, which is looking for a capital letter, um, and there's at least one match, then this will pass. Okay, so I'm going to refresh the page so that you can see that working again. So if I do lowercase test, we obviously don't pass that. If I type in uppercase test, then we now pass that condition. It's found this match. And again, if I go into the inspector and select my text, and I open up this expression here, uh, and I select extract with regex here, you can see that this is the value that um, came back. So that's doing exactly what we're asking it to. Now, all you need to do for the other uh, two requirements here is just change the pattern. It's the exact same um, condition. The pattern is the only thing that is different. So for to find at least one number, the pattern is here. And by the way, I'm going to paste in the patterns. I know it might be a little bit hard to see here in the video. I'm going to paste these three patterns in the description below. Um, for one number, uh, we're really looking for any digit. That's what the D stands for, is digit. 
And then for special character, uh, we are going to search where we're going to exclude, you can see any capital letters, any lowercase letters, and any numbers. The caret uh, character here at the very front means that we're going to exclude all of that. So anything else will be considered a special character, um, and that's what we want to find here. So now I can preview this uh, input to have all of my requirements met. I'm just going to do a very uh, uh, long password here with numbers. We have a special characters, we have uppercase and lowercase, and we can see that it is meeting all of the criteria there. So that would be a very handy way to let your users know um, that they're on the right track with the password they're creating. Now one thing I did want to point out is that um, Bubble does have a little bit of a delay before it um, kicks in the conditions. So you can see if I start typing here, there is yep a few moments before it recognizes that there are multiple characters there. I'm going to do that one more time. I'm going to remove this and I'm going to do just numbers, a whole bunch of numbers. Okay, and there's just a few moments before it recognizes that. So you can actually use, there is a plugin um, that lets you pick up this input uh, much more instantly. I actually go into that in much more depth in my VIP membership. If you want to learn more about that, you can look at the description below. There's a more in-depth tutorial about this lesson here. But these methods should get you started with creating a uh, really handy password validation feature for your users. This isn't something that you can do with Bubble's native password validation. Bubble only recognizes a password as valid once the entire list of requirements is met. It doesn't tell you partially what's being met and what hasn't been met yet. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching.